Today I'm going to be doing a colored pencil demonstration of this wave. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. After my recent acrylic tutorial on this same wave actually, I had some requests to draw a wave in colored pencil for a lesson. So that is what I'm doing today. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got the two hour version of this tutorial available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to each of my weekly one to two hour long tutorials. I have over a hundred of them there right now. That's a lot of tutorials for four bucks. Now that I'm done with that self-promotion, let's move on to this tutorial. Now I'm going to be using the Touch Up Texture and Titanium White Mixture from BrushandPencil.com to add a lot of the white highlights and seafoam on my wave. If you are not using that product, I strongly recommend before you start with the color like I'm doing here, take one of your white wax-based pencils, so whether that be Prismacolor, Luminance, or the Derwent Drawing Chinese White, use one of those pencils and line in the areas you want to stay really, really bright. That's going to kind of protect your paper when you start blending with odorless mineral spirits from getting too dark. This will help you to keep those brighter lines of your waves in. So that's the main thing that I would do differently if I were to do this without the touch-up texture titanium white. Just line in all of the veins of your your wave first. So here, because I don't have to worry about that, I, I, using the touch-up texture titanium white mixture is definitely a way easier way to do this. I cannot imagine using colored pencil anymore without that product, but I'm going to line in or just start shading in my main shapes. Now, I don't need my color to be exact. I'm not really worried about that. I just want to get my general lights and darks blocked in first. And I'm keeping my pencils pretty sharp on this. I'm working, it's hard to tell when it's sped up like this, but I'm working in smaller little ovals. And this helps me to get a fairly smooth finish. Now, I don't need my, my base layers here to be that smooth, though. I can rush through this a little bit faster than I would, let's say, if I was working on a portrait where I wanted really smooth blending on the skin. Here, I don't need it to be that smooth because anything that I later on realize, oh, I was really blotchy here, or something didn't come out as smooth as I wanted, I'm going to put so much detailing with the waves or the veins in the waves going through this that it really isn't as big of a deal as it might normally be. I want to make sure I have a lot of pigment on this paper before I blend out with the odorless mineral spirits. If you have just a very light layer, and I am working with a very light hand, but I'm applying a lot of layers, even if it's the same pencil, don't feel like you, each layer has to be a different color. It can just be multiple layers of the same color. The point is I need a lot of pigment on the paper in order for this to blend out very well with the odorless mineral spirits. And I am keeping a very light hand so that I'm able to apply multiple layers. If I start pushing very hard, it's easy to think, okay, I'll be able to get this covered faster. I'll get more pigment if I push harder on the paper. What happens is you start burnishing the paper and it flattens it out so that it really isn't going to take additional layers. You're much better off. Keep the, each layer very, very light. Now I'm using a darker pencil and coming back through here underneath some of the sea foam. I'm taking this very pale color. All of the white areas of the seafoam, I'm going over that now with this color. I will put white highlights on top of that. But again, if you are not using Touch Up Texture Titanium White, try to protect the areas that you know you need to stay white a little bit better. Here, it's not something I have to worry about because white is going to go on top. Now, another thing to notice, there's actually not that much straight white on this piece. Most of it is slightly tinted with an aqua or teal color. When you look at it based on the contrast, it appears, when you look at that finished piece, it appears that I've got a lot of straight white. It actually isn't. If you take an eyedropper tool and check a lot of these colors, it's not straight white. It's close, but not straight white. It, it just appears that way based on contrast, how dark I get the colors next to it. Again, the same thing I did on the first layer, just blending and lots and lots of layering in between the blending. So I generally apply 
three to five light layers of colored pencil before I blend out with odorless mineral spirits. And I'm just using a Taquan bristled filbert brush for the most part when I do blend out with the odorless mineral spirits. That's what's on that brush right now. I'm often asked if I'm just using water to blend. Colored pencils are either wax or oil based. They're not going to blend with water. You can try it. Nothing's going to happen. But if you do try it, please videotape it and send it to me so we can all have a good chuckle. But it's not going to do anything. What I'm using here is it's odorless mineral spirits or it's a type of paint thinner that's going to dissolve the binders, the, the wax and the oil in that so that the paper or the color really kind of just settles into all the nooks and crannies of the paper. It gives me a very nice smooth finish. What it's not doing is really smudging one color into the next. And I think that's a misunderstanding when people think see odorless mineral spirits. They think they can put just two colors right next to each other. And when they go on top with the, the odorless mineral spirits, it'll just kind of blend them together like it would with wet, wet into wet paint. That's not really what you're doing here. What I'm doing is just making it essentially dissolve into the paper. So I'm getting rid of all that grainy gritty, the little white dots of the paper, the tooth of the paper showing through. But like I said before, it takes a lot of layers. A lot of pigment needs to be on that paper for it to look like this. And your first few times of blending out with odorless mineral spirits, it tends to give it a very dull look. That's normal. You're just going to keep layering until you get that nice rich color that you're going for. Now my video camera here is showing this to be a bit more green than the color I actually use. That end photo is more accurate to what the finished painting really came out like. And this is a lot of fun. I was actually surprised how much fun this was to do in colored pencil to get all these little details in the waves. So this is the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture that I'm painting on with a synthetic hog haired liner brush. And I'll have a card pop up so that you can see exactly how I mix this product and how I use it. But what I'm doing is just lining in the brightest highlights here. Now if you mix more of the liquid, the touch up texture, if you mix a little bit more of that, you're going to have more of a translucent, a lighter look for the white. If you want it to be more opaque, you're going to add a little bit more of the titanium white powder to the mixture. I let that dry completely before I start working with colored pencil. If you don't let it dry completely, it'll kind of lift off or chip off. Once that's completely dry, and by completely dry, I don't just mean to the touch. Give it maybe 20 minutes at least for it to be completely, completely dry. You can then blend on top of it with odorless mineral spirits. You can put colored pencil over it if you went too dark with an area. It's really, really flexible as far as that goes as long as you let it dry all the way. If it's not dry all the way, you can run into problems when you put pencil or OMS on top of it. So now for the wave. This part I want to be much more green where the light is, is coming through that wave where it's lifting out of the water. So I'm starting with this very, very warm green. And I'm going to layer that in all of the light areas. And as a general rule with colored pencil, it's better if you go too light than too dark to start off with. So as you can see, this is not the color that I want the end of my wave to be there. That's going to get a lot darker, but it's a lot safer if you go too light than too dark. It's very, very easy to darken things up with colored pencil. It's a bit more of a challenge to try to get them lighter again. Blending that same aqua color that I used in the background into parts of this wave. And then I've got this darker cool green. It's almost an emerald green that I'm coming into with the shadows here. One of the most common questions I get from people is what color are you using? How do I know which color is in your hand? The color does kind of get over that. You just have to, to, to stop with this idea that if I have the right color, that's what's going to make my work look realistic. Color matters. Value matters more. Values, getting your lights light enough, your darks dark enough, that is going to make a much, much bigger difference than worrying about having the exact same color that I use. If I draw this same thing again, I may use a whole different set of pencils and it'll come out similar. It may be slightly tinted differently, but it doesn't mean that it would be less realistic. That slight change in color is not a real big deal. What I really want to worry about is make sure that my darks are dark enough and that my lights are light enough. And of course, I do want this wave to be a different, a warmer green than what I've got the rest of the water just so that it stands out. 
And by warmer, what I'm talking about is that it's closer to yellow. This green is closer to yellow on the color wheel than it is to blue on the color wheel. Yellow, if you think of it as yellow being very warm like the sun, so that is going to be your warmer green. And I'm breaking this up into three major sections as I work on this. The back behind the, the wave, the wave itself, and then the water in front. And it makes it a little bit easier to tackle. And if that still feels very overwhelming to you, break it up into even smaller sections. You can work one square inch at a time if that makes it easier for you. One of the things that I used to do for students who would get a little bit overwhelmed or frustrated, I would take a piece of paper and cut out one or two square inches on it. And Well, actually, I would cut that out on two pieces of paper. I would cover their reference photo with the same area, and then I would cover the their artwork. So they were only focused on that one little area at a time. And breaking it up into these little sections definitely can make it a lot easier when you look at a piece and go, oh my gosh, there's too much detail. I'm never going to be able to do this. You can just break it down into smaller sections. And a lot of these colors as I layer, where I come on top with more of an aqua color, I will layer it into the green. I don't just put aqua where the aqua goes, green where the green goes. Most of it is going to slightly blend into the next color over, and that's what gives me that very soft transition. You want to think of most of these shapes in terms of abstract shapes. Look at it as just an abstract shape. Don't look at it as I'm drawing a wave. This doesn't look like a wave. Well, sort of. But I mean, as you're working, it normally won't really look like what you're trying to do, especially if you're working one small section at a time. Look at that abstract shape. Even though we may be working in realism, we really have to think more abstractly or look at it as an abstract in those shapes to get it to look that realistic. It'll all come together in the end, but in the beginning, you really have to focus on the shapes that you're seeing in that reference photo. Now, once you've done something like this, whether it be waves, landscapes, trees, that sort of thing, you're not going to have to copy your reference photo that closely. You'll get a general idea of the movement of the water, of the movement of the trees, all of those things. But when you're first starting off, if you've not drawn or painted very many waves, make sure you get a good reference photo and copy it pretty close. It doesn't have to be exact because if your wave is a little too far to the left, too far to the right it doesn't really no one's going to know the difference like they would if you did a portrait and the nose is a little too far to the right or the left so it's a very forgiving way to get started but it is tedious in the amount of detail that it requires so if you've got the patience for it anyone can make this look great it just takes patience but get a decent reference photo this one i got from graphic stock which actually they just changed to story blocks i believe you can also find great reference photos for free over on pixabay or morgue file one of those But don't, once you've done this a few times, don't feel like you have to copy every little teeny tiny thing. But when you're getting started, it does make it easier if you go for semi-close. Now, a lot of this sea foam in here, notice how I started with the darker color. It's not just white. If I started with white, I can't go brighter. So you see how I've darkened all of that up. And now when I come on top with the touch-up texture titanium white mixture, look how nicely that stands out. And I've got all of these shadowed areas on the grayish green sea foam underneath. I'm often asked, can't I just use acrylic paint for drawing these details with white? No, be well, I mean, you can. Go for it if you want, but your work is not going to be archival. It's not made for colored pencil. Colored pencil being wax and oil-based, you don't want to put a water-based product on top of it. Same with the gel pens. I don't recommend gel pens if you're trying to make your work last a very long time. This product here is made for it, so it's not going to come off. It's not going to chip off. The one thing that you do want to be aware of, though, it is non-flexible, so I wouldn't want to roll this piece up. I want to make sure that it stays flat because if I were to roll it let's say into a tube for shipping that could cause some of that white to chip but as long as it keeps flat so with this one I would sell it matted and flat and so there would be no it wouldn't bend it, it's not a problem or you could work on a mounted surface is another way to go but you don't want something to work on something that you're planning to roll up and using this product with it because it is a very it's non-flexible Notice how many shadows I start adding into the waves here. The shadows as that water crashes over is a very, very big deal in making that sea foam look realistic. 
Now, this is an important thing to notice. Look at how as I add work on these the well the darker areas in between the sea foam the veining in the sea foam look at how horizontal most of this is kept i don't want to start making a whole lot of vertical lines or diagonal lines the majority these longer lines that i've got in there look at how most of them stay very flat very horizontal this is creating that perspective that i want for the water for the wave as it lifts up, that's where I get into the more vertical and diagonal lines. But when I get down to this bottom area, the same as the wave or the water behind the wave, notice how everything flattens out. And that is what's creating that, that lift of the water. So it looks like that wave is actually lifting up out of it. This is a big deal anytime, really, when you're doing water. Pay attention to where you want horizontal versus diagonal lines. If you start getting diagonal or vertical lines, that's, that makes the water look like it's coming up into the air. If you are drawing a lake, or a stream even, most of your lines, your little sparkle lines, whatever it is that you're doing, those are going to stay very flat, very horizontal. You really want to watch that perspective. It's not a difficult thing to do. It's just something that you want to watch. Same thing, let's say you were drawing pebbles, a, a walkway with pebbles or stepping stones, that sort of thing. Look at some photographs of that. Your perspective in most cases, unless you're looking straight down on top of that pathway, if it's a landscape type thing where that pathway with those big stepping stones are fading off into the distance, they're going to be long and skinny, horizontal. You're not going to have big ovals in the shape of an actual, what the stepping stone would look like if you looked down over it. It throws off the perspective if you do that and makes it look like that stepping stone is just kind of sticking up into the air. You want it to look like it's flat, like it's going back into the distance, and so you get this flat shape like I'm getting here with the water. Same thing, really watch your, sp your perspective on that sort of thing. Pay attention to your reference photo there, and that's a big deal when you're first starting out with landscapes. Watch that perspective. If it's grass, the same thing. Notice most areas of grass, and you will have exceptions to this based on how the grass is mowed or if there's rows of, especially if man made anything, where you've got rows, that may change a bit. But if you've got natural grass in a distance, most of the lines that you're going to see, you're going to have these horizontal sections going through them, which kind of flattens out the grass. It, make, it creates the perspective you're looking for. For. One of the bigger mistakes I see newer artists make is they, when drawing sea foam, stepping stones, grass, whatever, you know, a pathway going through, they tend to try to make things look like they would look if you're looking down on top of it. But that throws off the perspective of the painting. You, you generally will have these longer, kind of thin horizontal lines. Really watch that in your paintings. What, again, whether that be seascapes, landscapes, whatever it is, watch that where your line should be long and thin versus what it looks like when you look down on top of the whatever it is that you're painting. Now I'm coming through with my Derwent Drawing Chinese White and adding a few details. And this will show up over my darker areas. You can see that pencil very well. It's not going to be as bright as my Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture, but I can still see a lot of this. It basically just lightens up the color underneath where I'm adding it. And I'm going to go back and forth where I add some lighter areas and I can come back through with deeper shadows in between some of these little sections. And the reason that I'm going with a pencil here versus the Touch of Texture Titanium White is this gives me a much more subtle look. This, these are my more muted highlights for the veining and the waves. Where I want things to be much brighter, then I'm going to switch over to my Touch of Texture Titanium White Mixture. Again, adding more layers, lots of pigment on that paper, and then blending that out. Here's that Touch Up Texture Titanium White mixture. Again, if you want it to be a little bit more translucent so it's not as bright, just use a little bit more with the Touch Up Texture. Less of the, the powdered Titanium White. If you want it to be more opaque, use a bit more of the powdered white. And I'm using a flat synthetic hog haired brush here and just moving it side to side, which gives me nice thin lines, keeping it fairly sketchy. I don't want my lines to be too uniform. Having something that is very rough is, or 
I guess the variation in there is really important in keeping a natural look. I don't want to just keep doing the same brush stroke over and over again. It's easy to look at something and go, wow, this brush stroke looks great. And you just keep redoing that same brush stroke again and again. And now you have something that looks very unnatural. Whether you're painting wildlife fur, hair on a portrait or waves here, you don't want everything to look exactly the same. So notice how some of these, I've got teeny tiny little lines, some of them are longer, some of them are thicker where I pushed harder with this brush so I get a thicker line. If I want a really thin line, I'm barely going to let the tip of that, those bristles touch the paper. Variation is a really big deal when making something look natural. And I don't want everything to just be bright white everywhere. I want to get that variation as far as that goes too. You can use your pencil to add the highlights like this. They just won't be quite as bright. If you want things to really stand out, this product I cannot recommend enough. No, I'm not being paid to say that. I just get super excited when there's something that I love. See how I'm moving that brush? Mostly horizontal lines, side to side. Little details, little highlights here and there. And you can use lots of different brushes with this. Typically, I always use my liner brush. I think this was the first piece where I decided it would be easier to switch to a different brush. But the synthetic hog hair are my favorite for that product. So I let that dry completely. Now I'm coming in between some of those colors and just darkening things up. I actually switched over to some of my Derwent Pro Color colored pencils here. These ones blend out so beautifully, and there's some really nice colors. These, of course, are the light fast colors that I'm choosing out of that set. I'm using a lot of different shades of kind of a muted pink, a grayish pink, a grayish purple. It worked really well for this one. And I like the Derwent Pro Color because they blend out so smoothly. So most of the blending I'm doing at this point is just from burnishing. I'm onto my last layers so I can go ahead and start pushing a little bit harder with the pencils and letting it blend out that way. That's one thing with those pencils, they blend so nice whether you're burnishing or odorless mineral spirits layering. However you work, those pencils do work really, really well for that. In the last hour or two that I work on a piece, I'm just fussing over little details, backing away from it, squinting, deciding if I need to darken things up, brighten things up, any little adjustments that might need to be made. Basically, I call it finished, and then I spend another hour or two working on it, on pretty much everything that I do. It's why normally you'll see my signature on a piece way before I'm actually done with it, because I think I'm done, but then I go back and work for a couple more hours. So there is my finished painting. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I can see a white dot on my camera lens and it's not, I don't think that's shine. I'm pretty sure I have paint on my camera lens. I should probably do something about that. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going to it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week.